Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, February 25th, 2011. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States, 4.30 p.m. in London, in Bermuda, 12.30, and in Mexico City, 10.30. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Uh, big developments in Libya. We'll get to that as our uh, first story after the break. Uh, let's go to the main news. AIG came out with some numbers today for the uh, all of uh, the fourth quarter of 2010, and they are real stunners. Um, they're reporting a profit of $11.2 billion for Q4 2010. However, most of the gains came from selling and spinning off two of its life insurance units. Last month, AIG made big progress on uh, its plan to get the government to sell its 92% stake in the company. The government's invested $182 billion in it. AIG's earned $16.60 per share in the fourth quarter uh, compares to a loss of $65.51 a share for the same period last year. So this quarter, fourth quarter, they made $11.2 billion. Last fourth quarter, they, made, they lost $8.87 billion. Of course, most of that is a result of the spinoff uh, of the Asian units. Chartis, the subsidiary of AIG, that's the non-life insurance division, uh, recorded a uh, $4 billion operating loss after tax in the fourth quarter. This is following its previously announced $4.2 billion reserve hike, apparently mainly due to asbestos. Excluding the reserve strengthening, AIG said that Chargers' operating result would have been broadly in line with the 1.8 billion pound loss that it made in the fourth quarter of 2009. Chargers' pre-tax loss more than doubled to $3.3 billion in the fourth quarter of 2010 from losing $1.6 billion in the same period last year. The combined ratio of the insurer combined with the reserve now jumps up to 161 percent. There's no good news there at all, apparently. Um, New Zealand update now. The government-backed cat insurer. Look at this before we get into that. These are the aftershocks that have been hitting there in Christchurch. If you look at that little box, um, we broke this out before the show. There's apparently six uh, earthquakes there, the main quake and then five aftershocks. Some of the aftershocks were actually uh, not so small. They're like 5.6, 5.4. Uh, and experts are warning that they can expect aftershocks in that area for several weeks to come. Uh, the government-backed uh, uh, earthquake catastrophe insurer is expecting at least 110,000 claims from the earthquake this week. It's gone so far as to ask property owners uh, who do not have emergencies to not submit their claims and wait, wait until the emergencies are dealt with. The New Zealand Earthquake Commission Chief Ian Simpson said that the insurer had suspended its claims assessment operations to focus on the emergency response. Uh, here's a, a photo of a woman walking her dog past a, uh, a wrecked building. Life is still going on there, although the death toll now is uh, possibly over 110. Um, they still have a number of people missing. One of the people still missing is a Marsh McLennan staff person. Um, one employee of Marsh is believed dead and fears are growing for other, uh, two other staff members who are still missing. They were working in the Broker's Christchurch office, which was an office building that, that was flattened. All three staff have been missing since the 6.3 quake. Uh, the Pacific Regional Head of Marsh, John Clayton, said, I can confirm that we have particular concerns about three of our colleagues, one of whom we believe has died, although we are waiting for official confirmation. The other two colleagues remain unaccounted for. Clayton said that the staff is in shock, uh, no doubt. Well, Ramanier has popped back up. He's a good man. We're happy for him. Former Hartford Financial Services Group CEO Ramanier has joined XL Group in Bermuda as a member of the board. XL's chairman Robert Glauber said, Mr. Ayer's vast knowledge and industry experience complement the existing expertise of the board and will benefit the company. Air retired from Hartford in October of 2009. He'd been the CEO for 12 years. He's also a former chairman of the American Insurance Association. Uh, Brit Insurance, as you may know, is domiciled in the Netherlands. 
Um, that little uh, intentional move has helped to post a uh, post-tax profit of 110 million pounds for 2010. This is up from 87 million pounds in 2009. And this is despite a decrease in their gross written premiums from 1.7 billion to about 1.5 billion. Here's why. The bottom line was helped by uh, the redomiciliation in the Netherlands, which has an effective tax rate uh, of 5% for Britain in 2010. Guess how much their tax rate in England was in 2009? 24.8%. So that's almost a 20% drop. The combined ratio rose to 97% from 94%. Um, Brit, of course, is in the process of being acquired by Achilles. I'm sure that that story is getting a lot of attention, and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of scowls on the uh, faces of people at 11 Downing Street where the Chancellor of the Exchequer lives. Stock market in New York, whoa, is actually up. Can you believe that? After three down days, it's up 43 points. We'll tell you why in a minute. Well, Libya is out of control. Um, forces uh, loyal to Gaddafi, uh, a very small group of forces apparently reinforced by mercenaries from Chad, French-speaking Africans from Chad who have been employed by uh, the erstwhile colonel, have combined with a specialized private protection regiment and are firing uh, on the crowds in Tripoli as we speak. Uh, many people are being injured, many people are being killed, nobody knows what's going on. Uh, so far there's only one Western reporter that we have seen who's there, and that's Richard Angle from NBC. Uh, photographs and videos that are coming from there are relegated simply to uh, YouTube at the moment. The Western press has pretty much been shut off. Uh, Gaddafi is alternatively uh, uh, said to be preparing to die uh, in a Hitler-like suicidal manner, uh, fighting to the last drop with the crowds coming in, uh, and alternatively uh, has been spotted in uh, eastern parts of the country, rallying his forces there. It's believed, however, that he is in Tripoli. It's believed that he is ensconced in an army barracks, and it's believed that uh, even as we speak now, it's coming up to about 7 p.m. there, uh, the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of protesters are creeping ever closer to where Gaddafi is. Um, if they get him, and if he hasn't killed himself, 
they will kill him. The Saudis have announced again today that they are immediately beginning to make up the shortfall of production caused in the world oil markets uh, by the uh, decrease of the Libyan export amount of oil. The only difficulty, of course, is that the Libyan oil is uh, so-called sweet oil, very light in sulfur content and uh, very easily adaptable for use in diesel engines. Uh, the Saudi oil is more sulfurous in content and requires more refining. However, the stock market seems to have stabilized somewhat. Uh, the price of oil has actually begun to go down as it seems as if the crisis in Libya will resolve itself one way or the other. Protests all around the Middle East are occurring today. Uh, in Yemen, in the Sudan, and in Iraq, where apparently several dozen protesters were killed in a day of rage. Also in Egypt, hundreds of thousands of Egyptians gathered in Tahrir Square again, signaling solidarity with their Arab brothers across the region. Thus far, uh, nothing has been reported in Saudi Arabia. If we think we've seen the price of oil go up as a result of what happened in Libya, wait until there is a demonstration in Saudi Arabia. Uh, you won't be able to see the price of oil. Allianz from Germany says that its fourth quarter earnings climbed 11% on a little bit of an increase in revenue and a more profitable performance by its core business. They reported net earnings of 1.14 billion euros for the last quarter of last year. It's up from a shade over 1 billion euros the year before. Revenues climbed 2% to 26 billion euros from about 25.5 billion euros. The Munich-based giant said that its combined ratio at its P&C division was down to 94.9% from 95.3%. It's a pretty good total for Allianz. Big news in the U.S. This is, this is going to have people scratching their heads, but this is what globalization does, I suppose. The United States Air Force uh, has decided to award a $35 billion contract to the Boeing Corporation. Uh, the contract is to build nearly 200 airborne refueling tankers. It's one of the biggest defense contracts ever. It's going to add tens of thousands of jobs to the American economy. Who was the biggest competitor? Indeed, who was the only other competitor? Uh, the European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company, EADS. Uh, you may know them as Airbus. Uh, a European-owned consortium composed of eight different countries had competed vigorously, and some say even more effectively, than did Boeing to get this contract. The United States Air Force selected the Chicago-based Boeing to build the planes in Washington and in Kansas. Nevertheless, there's concern. The Europeans plan to complain about it. Uh, their allies in the Congress plan to complain about it. And the plants that have been set up in Mobile, Alabama, and elsewhere by EADS to build the plane have begun to add local pressure, but the deal seems to be done. On the surface of it, it seems like a little bit of a no-brainer. An American Air Force contract, an American economic uh, situation and turmoil, and an American company. Why not? The point is, is that this is an open and fair and free market. Competitors from outside the United States have the same shot as do we. That's something that if every company, every country in the world was playing by the same rule book, would be fair for everybody. Um, I didn't admit, intentionally mean to set up this last story that way, but that's the way it worked out. So we'll go to the last story. Bloomberg is reporting that LinkedIn, the operator of the largest networking site for professionals, became inaccessible for about nine hours earlier today in China. This was after a user in China on LinkedIn posted comments that Tunisia's Jasmine Revolution that overthrew Ben Ali should spread to China. The blockage of the service appears to be part of a broader effort in China going on right now involving other social sites as well. This is according to a spokesman for California-based LinkedIn. LinkedIn has uh, announced just a few minutes ago that their service in China is back up. Since 2009, China has shut out sites such as those operated by Facebook and Twitter that don't comply with Chinese rules to self-censor information on politically sensitive subjects. A LinkedIn user identified only as Jasmine Z last week set up a discussion group to post opinions on whether the revolutions that brought down the leaders of Tunisia and Egypt should be brought to China. 
my goodness, a professor at Berkeley, Doug Tiger, said often this is done as a sort of warning signal by the government, sort of a shot across the bow. Uh, Lu Wu Fang, chief of the State Council Information Office, the Internet Affairs Bureau, did not return phone calls. On February 23rd, this person, Jasmine Z, set up the Jasmine Voice Discussion Group to post opinions on the pro-democracy protests currently spreading through the Middle East. The uh, discussion group is not there. We checked before we came on the air. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. In the meantime, have a pleasant weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Thank you for watching.